and welcome back. I want to give you guys an update regarding construction numbers in the U.S. based on housing starts, permits pulled, and of course, houses under construction. I'm also going to give you guys an update regarding construction costs in the U.S. as well. So I have a lot to share. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I first want to talk about lumber futures prices. Uh, these are not the prices you pay at uh, Home Depot, for example, or your local lumber yard. Instead, these are future prices. But when looking at these prices here at $383 right now, at the time of this video, which is the 28th of March, this is actually a uh, what 4% increase uh, year to date. So lumber future prices have increased by 4% so far this year. However, though, compared to one year ago, they're actually down 60.5%. Also compared to five years ago, obviously pre-COVID, uh, lumber future prices are down by 17%. Also, I found this interesting article from the National Association of Home Builders that was just posted about two weeks ago. It says, after four consecutive months of decreases, the producer price index or their PPI for residential construction, in other words, building material prices, uh, rose by 0.3% in February. So overall building material prices increase slightly in February compared to January this year. Uh, look at this stuff because ready mix concrete has been absolutely skyrocketing ever since really January of 2021. So RMC um, prices have increased in all but two months since January of 2021. Prices increasing every single month ever since uh, January 2021, except for two months regarding ready mix concrete. Also, softwood lumber prices have fallen by 0.8% in February, the seventh consecutive monthly decrease. Uh, since peaking in March of 2022, the index here has fallen by nearly half, down by 47.1%, but still it's nearly 20% above January 2020's level. In addition, gypsum products, which is more or less drywall, that has increased by 12.5% compared to one year ago. However, though, it began stabilizing in August last year because over the past six months, it has only risen by 0.7%. And here's a chart below right here showing prices. Um, ever since October 2020, prices for gypsum have been soaring, except for the past six months, it has been relatively flat. Also, prices for steel mill products, that has increased by 2.6% this February, but it's down by 21.2% over the past 12 months. In other words, to summarize this right here, uh, lumber prices have been decreasing, but much of these other construction materials have actually been increasing over the past several years. Here's what we also know as well from the National Association of Home Builders for uh, March, because builder confidence for building new single family houses have increased every single month this year. So confidence for building single family houses have increased uh, for January, February, and March this year. However, based on my own analysis of their data here, when looking at pre-COVID levels, the current levels right now of builder confidence right now is at its lowest levels since May of 2013. And I mention this because builder confidence has increased for three consecutive months, but when we're looking at pre-COVID levels of their index, the lowest levels going back to May of 2013. Also, as I mentioned in a video from last week, brand new single family home sales have now increased for three consecutive months based on data from the US Census Bureau. And prior to last week's report, which was for February's home sales, the National Association of Home Builders stated that the, uh, one of the reasons why we have an increase in home sales is due to home builders using incentives and price discounts. So for example, 31% of builders said they have reduced home prices in March, the same share as of February, but lower than the 36% that was reported last November. Also, 58% provided some type of incentive uh, to home buyers this March. All right, let's change gears slightly and talk about new home construction numbers according to the U.S. Census Bureau's report that was reported about two weeks ago in which I did not make a video, uh, but I actually want to touch on it, on it today though. So for uh, permits pulled on a seasonally adjusted annualized basis here, look at the difference between um, five units or more versus single family. So this column right here is for single family. Permits pulled increased by 7.6% compared to last month, which was uh, January, of course. However, though, compared to one year ago, permits pulled for single family have decreased a whopping 35.5%. 
However, though, look at five units or more. A giant increase of 24.3% on a month-to-month -month basis, an increase of 16.9% compared to February of 2022. So based on this information right here, it appears that home builders are more focused on building multifamily properties versus single family. Here's actually a better way to look at permits authorized for single family houses. Because again, an increase of 7.6%, but down nearly 36% on a year-over-year -year basis. Let's look at our good friend, uh, Uncle Fred's website here. So here's single family permits authorized over the past 12 months. So this increase we saw in February is actually the first increase in the last 12 months. In other words, permits being pulled for building single family houses have decreased in 11 out of the last 12 months. One thing I found to be very interesting as well, it actually depends on the region as well. On a year-over-year -year basis, every single region is recorded decreases compared to one year ago, uh, down by double digits. Uh, for example, the Northeast down by 37%, the Midwest down by 30%, the South decreased by 32%, and of course the West decreased by 45.6%. The biggest decrease um, on a month-to-month -month basis was actually in the Northeast, decreasing by 14.5%. In contrast, in the Midwest, they actually posted the biggest increase, a gain of 10.9% uh, compared to January of 2023. Let's also have a look at housing starts for single family versus multifamily as well, because this is a similar trend regarding permits being pulled as well. So again, uh, compared to uh, one year ago for single family, that decreased by 31.6%. In contrast though, for five units or more, that actually was an increase of 14.3%. On a month to month basis, for single family, more or less flat compared to January, but for five units or more, a giant increase of 24.1% from January this year. The reason why I mentioned this is that because when talking about total housing starts, which also includes single family plus multifamily, look at that because it actually increased by 9.8% overall. But this 9.8% increase is largely due to the fact that we had a 24.1% increase of five units or more. By the way, I should have mentioned this earlier on, but when talking about permits being authorized and also housing starts, these numbers here are on a seasonally adjusted annualized basis. They're also in thousands of units. So for example, for a single family housing starts, 830 really means of course 830,000 on a seasonally adjusted annualized basis. Here's another way to look at single family housing starts in the US right now because uh, again, on a seasonally adjusted analyzed basis, that has been decreasing more or less ever since March last year. And the current levels at 830,000 are actually at the lowest levels looking at pre-COVID levels going back to February of 2019. Something else worth noting as well is that housing starts vary quite a bit compared to the region you're looking at. So on a month to month basis, look at the West, a giant increase of 28.5% single family houses. In stark contrast, look at uh, the Midwest, down by 8.1%. Also, the South fell by 4.7%. On a year-over-year -year basis, uh, housing starts actually decreased by double digits in each of these four major regions. The West fell the most by 45%. The Midwest fell by 42% from February last year whereas the Northeast only fell by 11.3%. I also wanna share with you guys the number of units under construction as of the end of February and how that compares to years past. Let's first talk about um, the total number of units under construction, which is right here, a gain of 6.9% on a year-over-year -year basis. Now we'll look at this though, because this gain of nearly 7% compared to February last year is largely due to the fact of this 22.4% increase in five units or more because single family actually decreased by 8%. Let's also have a look at Uncle Fred's website right here regarding um, single family houses under construction, which by the way, these numbers right here are seasonally adjusted, but they're not annualized. So 734,000 is a seasonally adjusted rate right now, which is right there, 734,000 but has been decreasing ever since more or less June last year. So the number of single family houses under construction have now decreased for nine consecutive months. Also, when we zoom out going back to 2006, 
the current levels right now at 734,000 when looking at pre-COVID levels is comparable to May of 2007 when at that time there was 730,000. When looking at multifamily properties, these are buildings with five units or more that are under construction that has been skyrocketing since the summer months of 2021. And check this out, because when we zoom out as far back as this data goes, which actually is uh, January of 1970, at 941,000, this is an all-time record high. The highest number of buildings with five units or more that are under construction. And before I share a summary of today's video, uh, check this out because this actually can provide some context regarding some potential changes regarding inflation numbers in the months ahead. Because completions of five units or more, the vast majority of these are actually apartment buildings in order to rent out. So these are completions a giant increase of 44.6% on a month-to-month -month basis and a giant increase of 72% compared to February of 2022. And because inflation data is largely impacted by rising rents, this increase of housing supply of apartment buildings is likely to cause rents to actually decrease in the months ahead. And therefore, because of this, if we have a big influx of apartment buildings in order to rent out, that will cause inflation numbers to fall in the coming months as well. In contrast, look at single family houses though, because completions is flat on a month to month basis, but still down by 3.6% compared to 12 months ago. Okay, I know there's a lot to cover in today's video and a lot of you guys asked for some additional analysis and also a summary at the end of the video. So for those of you who asked for this, I hope you're still watching this video here. Um, anyways, here's a summary for you guys. Uh, single family um, home construction is slowing amid affordability challenges and of course volatile and relatively high rates compared to the past several years. Uh, single family permits pulled as well as housing starts were down over 30% on a year year basis. Completions of single family houses have decreased by 4% from February last year. In other words, we don't see this flooding of new home constructions that actually has been completed here. Lumber future prices are down 41% year over year, but overall building material prices have actually increased. Builder confidence for building new single family houses have increased every single month so far this year through March. In comparison to pre-COVID levels though, builder confidence is at its lowest levels since May of 2013. In regards to single family houses for permits pulled on a seasonally adjusted annualized basis, that increased by 8% compared to last month. That was the first increase, by the way, in the last 12 months, uh, but we're still down by 36% compared to February of 2022. In contrast, for five units or more, that increased by double digits on a month to month basis, as well as on a year over year basis as well. For single family housing starts on a seasonally adjusted basis, uh, that actually was flat compared to last month, but still down by 32% compared to February of 2022. In contrast, just like permits pulled for five units or more, that actually increased by double digits from last month and also from 12 months ago as well. So builders have been more focused on building multifamily versus single family as home buying demand has decreased compared to last year. For the number of units under construction for single family houses, that actually decreased for nine consecutive months, falling since June last year. Now, having said that, when looking at pre-COVID levels right now for um, single family houses under construction, we're at the highest rates since approximately May of 2007. And part of that rise is due to construction delays in other words, it's taking builders longer to build houses. One thing, of course, I do want to mention is that regarding these units under construction, this does not mean that they're actually going to be flooding the market and they're going to be for sale once the house is completed. Because uh, based on uh, a report from the U.S. Census Bureau that reported about, uh, what, a week ago? Uh, by the end of February here, there was 258,000 houses under construction that were technically for sale. So 258,000 in the US that were under construction that were for sale. That represents 60% of all single family houses for sale at the end of February. So 258,000 houses under construction that were for sale 
of the total of 427,000 houses for sale. And of course, I mean new single family houses uh, for sale in the US. With that said, please comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value with this video whatsoever, then please like button. I really appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate you. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.